Figuring federal income tax for a corporation is very similar to figuring it for your personal federal income tax. People and corporations owe tax based on their earnings. So we don't know for sure what a corporation owes until the end of the fiscal period. Most corporations recognize, though, that they are going to have to owe something, so they pay in periodically throughout the year. Usually every quarter they'll send in a, an amount of money in anticipation that they're going to owe. But until the end of the fiscal period, they don't know exactly how much they owe. So in Moodle, in the 15-4 slides, on slide 5, it lays out how you figure up, first of all, what your net income is before federal income tax. And then on slide 7, it'll show how to calculate how much you owe based on that net income. So on slide number 5, it's telling you you're getting ready to do the adjusted trial balance. You have completed all of your adjustments. You uh, are ready to go for the end of the fiscal period, except for federal income tax expense. So step 1 says enter the account titles of all the general ledger accounts. So you can start from cash and go all the way to interest income. Enter all the balances of all the accounts except for federal income tax expense. We don't take that amount that we have prepaid into consideration. That is prepaid. It's an anticipation of what we are going to owe. Then it says calculate the total account balances of income statement credit accounts. So this means in the credit column we're going to add up all the accounts that would appear on the income statement. Anything after income summary appears on the income statement. So your first account in the credit side is usually sales and anything after that. So you're going to total up all of those in the credit column and get a total. And I usually tell you to put it on a piece of scratch paper for right now. Then you're going to do the same thing with the debit amounts. Calculate the total account balances of income statement debit accounts, excluding federal income tax expense. You haven't put it into this. If you look on here, you haven't put it in. And anything after income summary, not including income summary, but after income summary, is considered an income statement account. So usually your first one will be sales discount. And you'll add up all of your debits. So now you have a total of the credits and you have a total of the debits. And you want to find the difference. The hope is that your credit column is bigger than your debit column. Your credit column represents sales in short. Your debit column represents your expenses in short. So you want your sales to be more than your expenses. So in this example, the $103,518.97, that is our net income before federal income tax expense. This is what we owe tax on. So then we need to calculate it. Different tax rates apply for different levels of net income. So each tax rate and in income is considered a tax bracket. So on slide number seven, there is your tax rate schedule. What I recommend you do is either from your textbook or from this slide right here, print out this tax rate schedule, put it on a note card, and keep it because you're going to use it throughout the rest of the chapter and the rest of the year as we finish up the text. So this breaks down how you owe taxes. So you'll see in the first breakdown, anything over zero but under $50,000, you pay 15%. So for instance, if we had a net income before federal income tax expense of $48,000, we would take that times 15%. That would be how much federal income tax we owe. Then the next tax bracket is 50 to 75,000. Now that is only anything over 50,000 but under 75. So if we had a net income before federal income tax of 65,000, we would only take that amount that's over 50, which would be 15,000. That would be 25% of the 15,000 plus 7,500, which is based on the first 50,000 at 15%. It continues to break this down through multiple tax brackets. 
So in the example where we had 103518897 for net income, we already have a $100,000 break. So we're going to take anything over that 100000 which is the 100000 to 335 bracket, gives us $3,518.97. And according to our chart here, we owe 39% on that. So we take 39% times that number, and we get $1,372.40. We owe that tax just on this amount. On the first 100000 we owe $22,250, as it shows here in the highlighted column. So our total federal income tax we owe is $22,622.40. We don't know this number until the end of the fiscal period. Now, like I said earlier, in anticipation of knowing we're going to owe some money, we have been paying in throughout the year. So if we look at federal income tax expense, it looks as though every quarter we've been paying in $5,000. So we've paid in five, ten, fifteen, twenty. We now know we owe twenty-three thousand six hundred twenty-two dollars. So we need to make that final adjustment for the three thousand six hundred twenty-two dollars and forty cents. We debit federal income tax expense so that our total will equal this 22,622.40. And we credit federal income tax payable because we're not going to write a check today. We're going to write it in the future. Once we've done that, we posted it, then we can plug in our total federal income tax expense and our federal income tax payable and complete our adjusted trial balance.